Welcome to GT History, the video series where I present to you some of the most important stories of Grotopia. Anyone who played Grotopia knows that warlocks are super important in the game. Some people get called rich when they have one diamond lock, or maybe 20, but this case is different. In this video I will tell the story of Washi Paul, one of the richest players in Grotopia history. So first of all, who was Washi Paul? His real name is Paul Loew and he's from Singapore and apparently he said he's 30 years old but you can doubt that. And he also says he has a masters in marketing. He played back in the day of 2014 and 2015 and he's mostly known for owning the world Nasdaq back in the day and his huge collection of items for example 70 phoenix wings having like five legendary items, tons of diamond locks and one special item that I'm going to reveal to you at the end of the video. But how do you get so rich? Well, there's an answer for that. Uh, Washi Paul posted a forum thread back in the day where he explained how he got to that point and we can learn from the best. So let's see what he did. First of all, he started simple. He started farming pinballs and black rocks and sold super broadcasts for an overpriced amount of warlocks so that people would trust him. Back in the day, there were no megaphones and so the only option to buy an SB was to buy it from somebody else who had the gems. He continued farming until he had seven different farms, one per day he farmed them, and when he had that many farms, he decided to buy ATMS machines uh, until he had 10,000 of them. Which, remember, back in the day, one of them almost cost four warlocks, which means he has already had 4,000 uh, warlocks. But then something special happened. Zach Cotton, the then owner of the world Nasdaq, a price index world which was very popular back in the day uh, decided to sell the world for 260 diamond locks which is still very expensive for a world like that but Washi Paul decided to sell his ATMS to SideFX another infamous Grotopian player and buy the world Nasdaq for 260 diamond locks and this was the point where his Grotopia career really took off he started selling links from Nasdaq to other worlds for one diamond lock per day and he did that until he made 200 diamond locks from links alone, which is insane if you think about it. But one day he got an offer which he couldn't reject. You know, back in the day it was still allowed and legal to play casino and casinos were a huge source of income for many rich Grotopian players. And so the owner of the world casino, who was called LOL back then, decided to buy Nasdaq for 600 diamond locks to link it to his casino world. And so Washi Paul accepted the trade. Also, he was allowed to keep all the items from Nasdaq, so he pretty much sold an empty world to LOL. And that's how he got 600 diamond locks and all the items which were in Nasdaq. But now you may ask yourself, what did he do with all those items and diamond locks? Well, you see, back then there were no buy plus worlds, there were only trade worlds, and so the most popular trade worlds were worlds with the name trade plus a letter of the alphabet. And so Washi Paul decided he would buy every trade plus world he could find and sell links to other worlds, just as he sold links from Nasdaq. And that's what he did. He bought eight different Trade Plus worlds and he sold links to other worlds for multiple diamond locks each day. And he made quite a lot of diamond locks with those Trade Worlds. Also, when he bought the worlds, casinos actually got banned. And so as he owned all those Trade Worlds, they became more expensive because 
casinos weren't allowed anymore and trade worlds were the main source of income for easy warlocks. So, well, that's how he got all his diamond locks, but how about his collection? What were his most expensive items? So, first of all, a very obvious one is his five legendary items. He was able to get all legendary items back in the day that existed by himself, and that is just insane if you think about it. Also, he had multiple ATMS worlds, which he bought with the diamond locks again, and he decided to buy 70 Phoenix Wings, which he added to his collection and viewed as a source of investment, which was very smart back in the day. And also, he managed to get his hands on one of the most rare items in Grotopia, a real curse wand. There are only a few in the game, and most of the owners already quit, and so it was very hard for him to find uh, such a wand, but he eventually managed to buy it for 60 diamond locks, which is, if you ask me, pretty cheap, considering that it would be probably worth 10 times the price now. But his time as the richest Grotopia player wouldn't last long. Uh, eventually the inevitable thing happened and at the end of 2015 Washi Paul was banned because he was accused of selling diamond locks and items for real money. The ban is infinite and so there's no way he's gonna come back to the game ever again, which is also why Ubisoft took one of his most rare worlds he had, which was Nasdaq, that he bought back later in the year before he sold his diamond locks. But what this case shows that diamond locks don't make you happy in the long term. They're a pursuit you have, a goal you have in the game, but they won't keep you interested in the game. All the diamond locks and all the items he had wouldn't keep him playing the game because he eventually reached the goal. He managed to get everything there was in the game and so he had no more interest playing the game anymore and now all that's left are the memories and his youtube channel which you can check out in the description below there's some old content he used to stream on twitch too but that's it for him we probably won't see him ever again in the game that's also it for the video thank you for watching and i hope you like this series i'm going to make more videos about utopian history in the future if you liked it you can like the video and if you loved it you can subscribe also check out my live streams i live stream pretty much every day utopia and so yeah peace out see you in the next video